Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lie down, says the Lord. 
I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the crippled, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will watch over. I will feed them in justice. As for you, my flock, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I judge between sheep and sheep, rams and he goes. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. According to St. Matthew, glory be to thee, O Lord. At the time, Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate them one from another, and as a, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, he will place the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. 
then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, O blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when do we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When do we see you sick or in prison and visit you? He will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, you did not visit me. And they also will answer, Lord, when did you see you sick or hungry, thirsty, stranger, naked, or in prison, and did not minister to you? He will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it not for one of the least of these, you did it not to me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, to the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Come, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of all of our hearts, be acceptable in my sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Those words are what we want to hear from the lips of our Savior when we stand before him when all things are done. Come, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So when we hear those words, well, that sounds good. What is the kingdom? For us, it is not a, it is not a matter of what is the kingdom. It is a matter, or should be, of who is the kingdom. The kingdom of God can be looked at as an abstraction. I, you know, when I was in seminary, I don't know how many books I had to read about this. What the kingdom of God, what is the kingdom of God, this kingdom of God? It's really not difficult at all because it's not a matter of what it is, but who it is. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the kingdom of God. And these are not conjectural words. These are words that he says. Before our Lord starts his earthly ministry, his precursor, John the Baptist, says, not repent for the Messiah is here or repent our Lord Jesus is here he says repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand of whom is he speaking is he speaking of some kind of abstract world rule that's coming no he's speaking about Jesus Christ when our Lord's in his earthly ministry he casts out demons at one point and the Pharisees say, if you cast out demons by the power of Beelzebub, and our Lord, at the end of his discourse about, you better watch what you're saying, he says, if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Thief on the cross. He looks at our Lord Jesus Christ after his confession, and he looks at him and says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingly power. Our Lord does not respond, oh yeah, you know, at the last judgment, you're going to get that. He looks at him and says, today you will be with me in paradise. And then after his resurrection, after he gives his apostles the great commission, our Lord says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, not will be given to me at some future time, has been given to me. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the kingdom of God. We are subjects to that kingdom if we are in union with our Lord Jesus Christ. This is what we need to understand about it. It's not an abstraction. It's not something territorial. It's not something that you get in the future. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, day, and forever, the eternal Son of God, is that kingdom. Always has been. He has been the pre-established 
anchor point of that kingdom. Hence the discussion of him being the chief cornerstone, being the foundation upon which we build, not on sand, but on him who is firm. He's the kingdom. That's why I've been talking to a whole lot of people here over the past few weeks who are lamenting furiously over current events in politics in our life. I usually point out a couple things. One, it's fleeting. If you'll just look four years ago, one side was happy, the other side was weeping and gnashing their teeth. This year, it just flip-flopped, okay? That's the way things go down here. Because why? Because people are involved. We're flighty. We're not the same all the time. I vote for this guy because of this. I vote for this guy because of that. This girl because of this. This woman because of that. Hmm. Okay, when you do things like that, things are fluid. They're not firm. We, as Catholics, and it's not that we don't have to deal with that stuff. We need to have our priorities. We need to have our priorities. Our king, and that's exactly what he is, our king, the sovereign one, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, he's our anchor point. Not whatever goes on in this country, in that country, in the world. No, that doesn't, it, again, it affects our day-to-day -day lives at this place, and I'm not saying it doesn't. I'm just saying we should have our sights set on something else, on our Lord Jesus Christ, because he ultimately is the one that, I always like this one, and it usually comes from your non-Catholic friends. Have you made Jesus Christ Lord of your life? You don't make Jesus Christ anything. Jesus Christ is the King of kings and Lord of lords. The question is, have you subjected yourself to Jesus Christ as Lord? That's the question. Not have you made him anything. Perish the thought. That's blasphemous if you really think about it, even the wording. Have you made Jesus? You don't make Jesus do anything. He's God. Okay? You submit to him. This is what he wants from us. He wants us to be good subjects of his kingdom. And what I said about that is it's in union with him. This is what he desires of us. You know, and there is proof positive as to whether or not we're good subjects or not. You know, we need to give our allegiance to the king. Because, I mean, that determines who belongs to the kingdom and who doesn't. All right? The gospel today. Be attentive. All right? Pay attention to what it says. It's a judgment. All right, we need to understand that there are people who are going to, and some of them think, you know, the response from the ones that are the goats on the left side, what is their response? It's not, hey, you know, when do we, we they say, Lord, they think he's Lord. Lord, when do we see you and not, your faith was, not objective it wasn't real it wasn't practical this is why they're cast out our lord jesus christ and to be in union with him to be subject to it it's not like being subject in this world we don't like being subject to anybody okay we don't like people telling us what to do all right we're not like that particularly in north america you know this place was founded on people who didn't want people you know you're not the boss of me kind of folks okay well guess what Ultimately, you have a boss. That's all there is to it. We got to appreciate that. We want a good one. We want a, perfect, a perfect one. And you're not going to find it in this world. Okay? St. Augustine talks about our Lord Jesus Christ, and he talks about him in his reign as King and King of Lord of Lords. He says, he came to rule souls. He came to rule souls to care for their eternal interest, to lead those who believe in him and love him into the kingdom of heaven. Notice St. Augustine does not say to lead everybody into the kingdom of heaven. Those who believe in him and those who love him, practically speaking. Not I go to church and I know what the church teaches, but I approach it as a salad bar. I like that. I don't like that. I'll do that. I'm not going to do that. Okay. That's a bad subject. You know, Kind of bring it, 
you know, an illustration from like times past, like if you lived in the medieval times, what do you think would happen to you if the king told you, these are my rules, and you went, well, I'll do those and those, but I'm not gonna do that. What do you think would happen? Okay, best case scenario, Dungeon City, and what it generally panned out was, here, let me take your head off your shoulders then. All right, that was the reality of things. Why? Because he was sovereign, and what he said went, and he was frail, and he was sinful. We don't serve a ruler like that. We serve our Lord Jesus Christ, who is all, he, his being is to rule our self-interest, to lead us who love him and believe in him to eternal life. This is what he does. This is what we need to appreciate. So when we appreciate that and we watch what our Lord Jesus Christ, it should be easy for us to subject ourselves to him. Everything that he says, because he's not going to do anything that's to our detriment. You know, that's why we get all about a shape about elections in this world. Oh, he's going to do that, and I don't like it. She's going to do that, and I don't like it. Or I voted for them because I like this, and I like that. Wouldn't it be great to step back and just go, you know what? I want to be subject to this person because I don't have to worry about him doing anything that I like or don't like. I know that everything he's going to do, as the scriptures say, he will do all things well. Then it's really easy to go, I'll be subject to you. I'll do anything you want. Because I know that if I do everything that you want, I'm going to be okay. There is nothing that I'm going to do that you want me to do or not do that you don't want me to do that is going to be in any way detrimental to me. This is the way we need to start looking at things. It's progressive. It doesn't happen overnight. Our growth in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ is progressive. It is ever more and more subjecting ourselves to him. Most people that are in this parish are here because they've grown in the grace and knowledge of our Lord. They found wherever they were before deficient, no matter where it was, okay? Had some confirmations at the 1015 today, a whole family, you know, parents and adult and, and adult and teenage children that came from Protestantism. Why? Because they wanted to more and more subject themselves. They'd always been Christians, but they understood as they learned and delved into their faith that if you're going to truly embrace and be subject to our Lord Jesus Christ, you need to enter his church, the one he established on the back of Peter. If you are Peter on the rock, I will build my church. Okay? The Holy Spirit's still moving in people's lives, bringing them into the Catholic Church. You know, I always point out when they come into my office, I want to be a Catholic. I'm like, really? <laughs> really? Why? Because if you look at it from a temporal standpoint, it's a hot mess. But from a spiritual standpoint, it's the only place you can be to be in Jesus' church. All right? This is what we need to appreciate and understand. This is subjecting ourselves to him. You know? We want to be subject to him because if you're not subject to him, the sheep and the goats things applies. He will not allow people who are not subject to him into his kingdom. Okay, it, you know, you don't want to go, oh, okay, so, you know, he makes some people this way, that they'll be sheep, and this way they'll be, no, that's not who he is at all. And if you read the gospel and be attentive to what it says, it manifests that. The sheep there is on his right hand. He looks at them and he says, possess the kingdom that has been prepared for you from the foundation of the world. This is what our Lord wanted when he set creation in order. He wanted every single human being on the face of this planet to be in his kingdom. And he set it up to be just like that. And then there was the fall. And then everything got messed up. He didn't want it. He told them what not to do. They did it anyway because they had free will. And the rest is history. Because of that, now, it's a, okay, you've got free will. And just like your first parents, I'm giving you some parameters. If you abide by them, 
you're showing yourself subject to me, and if you don't, you are not. And when he says, possess the kingdom of heaven, prepare for you from the foundation of the world, it sets the stage of what he wanted. The kingdom of heaven has been prepared for you since the foundation of the world. But when he looks at the goats, he doesn't say, and you go into the flames that were prepared for you from the foundation of the world. He says, depart from me into the eternal flame that was prepared for the devil and his angels. Hell was not prepared for us. God doesn't want us to go to hell. He doesn't cast anybody into hell. They cast themselves into hell. All right? The wicked are condemned because of having omitted good works. By that omission, they cast themselves into hell. Depart from me. Into that place where you want to go because you didn't subject yourself to me. This is his will. He wants everyone to be saved. It is up to us to use our free will accordingly. It is what you want. And he's serious. You know, like I said before, those that are on his left hand, Lord, Lord. So just because you say that, just because you go to Mass on Sunday, okay, maybe say a rosary every now and then, you know, other things that aren't commensurate with that, cohabitate, contracept, things like that, all bets are off because you're not subjecting him, yourself to his will. This is what we have to understand about him. He is dead serious about us being part of the kingdom. And we prove it here, not later. This is where we got to go with this. This is what he wants for us. Our appreciation for what he's done for us to enable us to be subjects of the kingdom because we're subjects because of his grace we got to appreciate that and when we appreciate that we should act like we appreciate it we should live accordingly and that's what our lord demands of us because you're, you're particularly those who are outside the catholic church who bought into martin luther the arch heretics nonsense about faith alone Tell him to read this gospel. All this judgment, this whole list of things. Faith isn't mentioned once. Oh, you're a sheep because you had faith. And you're, not a, you're a goat because you didn't have faith. It's all based on works. All of it. Because if you have faith, you're going to have works. Newsflash, Martin Luther. The only place in scripture where faith and alone is in the Bible, in the sentence, is faith is not alone. It's in the book of James, and he didn't like the book of James because it really didn't resonate with its theology. Okay? That's why he didn't like it. It's not a matter of faith alone. Faith alone is an abstraction. It's a theory. We need to live a life that is a manifestation of our subjection to our Lord Jesus Christ. If we do this, there is no doubt that we are going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Okay, but I will also end with this one. Don't look at this list of things and say, oh, that means doing good for things for poor people. Those are called temporal works of mercy. There are also spiritual work of mercy that are more important. So when you read things like was hungry, that doesn't mean a person who hasn't had anything to eat. Okay, first and foremost, it's a person hungry for the word of God. All right, when it talks about being sick and in prison, it's not being, you know, having some malady and being incarcerated. It's being in the bondage of sin, okay? And we are called to visit them. Yeah? They can live in a very posh place, but we go to tell them that they're in bondage and we visit them. And we tell them about the freedom to be had in Christ Jesus. That's what it's talking about, yeah? Not making showers for homeless people, all right? It's much more than that. You give a sinner a shower, guess what you got? A clean person who's going to go to hell. That's not our business. Our business is cleansing souls. That's what the church is for. You know, the clerics and the ministry of the church to empower you to go out and do these things. And we need to do them because the consequences are dire. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.
given that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable unto God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of thy hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the law of the We offer unto thee, O Lord, this sacrifice of our reconciliation, humbly beseeching thee, that he whom we offer unto thee may himself bestow on all the nations the gift of unity and peace. Even Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee, world without end. Saints. 
grant that by their merits and prayers we may in all things be defended with the help of thy protection. We beseech thee then, O Lord, graciously to accept this oblation from us, thy servants, and from thy whole family. Order thou our days in thy peace. Commit us to be delivered to eternal damnation. Be numbered to the fold of thy elect. Thou sayest, O God, we beseech thee in all things to make this oblation blessed, approved, and accepted, a perfect and worthy offer, that it may become for us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Who the day before he suffered took bread into his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes lifted up to heaven unto thee, God, his almighty Father, giving thanks to thee, he blessed, broke, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. servants and thy holy people also remembering the blessed passion of the same Christ thy son our Lord is also his resurrection from the dead and his glorious ascension into heaven. You offer unto thine excellent majesty of thine own gifts and bounty. The pure victim, the holy victim, the immaculate victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Thou say to look upon the one of mercy and pleasant countenance, and to accept them, even as thou didst thou say to accept the gifts of thy servant Abel the righteous, and the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and the holy sacrifice, the immaculate victim, which thy high priest Melchizedek offered unto thee. We humbly beseech the Almighty God, command these offerings to be brought by the hands of thy holy angel from thine altar on high, in sight of thy divine majesty that all we who have been partaking of the altar shall receive the most sacred body and blood of thy Son, may be fulfilled with all heavenly benediction and grace. Remember also, O Lord, thy servants and handmaids who have gone before us, sealed with the seal of faith, who sleep the sleep of peace. To them, O Lord, and to all that rest in Christ, we beseech thee to grant the abode of refreshing of life and of peace. To us sinners also, my servants, who hope in the multitude of thy mercies, 
about St. Brian's Heart and Fellowship with thy holy apostles and martyrs, with John, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicitas, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and with all thy saints within his fellowship, we beseech thee to admit us, not weighing our merit, but granting us forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through whom, O Lord, thou dost ever create all these good things, thou sanctify, quicken, bless, and bestow them upon us. By whom, and with whom, and in whom, to thee, O Father Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, the all honor and glory throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. And now, as our Savior Christ the commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Lord,
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that taketh away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am now worthy of thou all shows to come in our loop. Let us speak the word of the Lord, and so shall we be. Lord, I am now worthy of thou all shows to come in our loop.
our Savior Jesus Christ, with us the shores of life, by the faith and goodness towards us, and that we and our very members and former in the midst of the body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are all spares the hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so that the list is us to thy grace, we may continue to have a holy fellowship. They will also be the Lord for God and for us to walk with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, that we and the Lord of us be all honor and glory for all the God. Amen. Let us pray. We beseech thee, O Lord, that we who have received the food of everlasting life may so glory to fight under the banner of Christ our King, that we may be made worthy to reign with him forever on his throne in heaven, where he liveth and reigneth, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater, Epidus, Spiritus Sanctus, Amen. Ite Nisa est, Dominus Voviscu, Dimitri Sancti Dente, Iscum Ioana, Gloria a Dio, Amen. In principio era verbum et verbum, ara ab Deum et Deus era verbum, ok era in principio ab Deum. Ogni per iso un facto sun et sine iso facto est di hucul facto est. E iso vita era, vita era, us hominum et us etenere suce etenere eo non comprehendere, ut homum iso sadeo, ut nomen era Ioannis, e venit in testimonium, ut testimonium per hibere didome, ut omnes creatorum per iu, non era ibelux, sed ut testimonium per hibere didome. Era ut vera quae, Illuminat omnem homenem venientem in mundum, et mundo erat et mundus per iisum factus est, et unus eo non conumi, et propria venit et sui eo non recepero, quocot autem recepero nego, et di eis possessatum filios dei fieri, et quid credo in nomine eius, qui non ex sanguinibus, neque ex voluntate carnis, neque ex voluntate viri, sed ex deo nati sumus. In verbum paro facum est, in habitabit nobis, dimitibus gloriam eius gloriam quasum in agenti patric plenum gratia veritatis, deo gratis. Amen. 